Good morning, good morning. Just giving a quick update on my uh, raised beds. Still hadn't taken these down yet. Uh, maybe do that this weekend. But uh, the cabbage, these are my cabbage. They're looking really good. I put uh, coffee grounds on, I think it was Friday. If you look right here, you can see the coffee grounds. So what I'll do next, um, because the top layer of, the, of each bed is black cow. What I'll do next is uh, uh, I'll put the fish emotion. Fish emotion on maybe Friday. And that's when you'll see the, that dark green color really shine, that nitrogen. Um, we're really, um, because you, you don't want to feed your, your, your saplings, your seedlings. You don't want to feed them too early. You want to get them, you want them to get established first. Once they get established, you can go ahead and feed them. So yeah. And after I feed them that first dose of fish emotion, I'll hit them maybe once a week, maybe every Friday. And, uh, you'll see because, uh, nitrogen, what nitrogen does, nitrogen really, uh, brings out you know, it, it feeds the, the the leaves. It makes the leaves like really, really pop. I'm also going to be checking for um, cabbage worms. You know, cabbage worms. If you got any kind of brassicas, man, you got to really watch out for them. I see a, I see a spot right here on this one leaf right here. That spot right there. So what you do is you want to bring that leaf back and really look to see if you got those worms coming on because they those worms it only takes about a day two days at most to uh really take out a whole plant you know a new seedling and this this uh brussels sprout sprout i'm gonna call this one here um tiny tim because it, it's holding on tiny tim is holding on but goodness gracious it ain't looking too good you know, all of my, uh, I got all of these seedlings from uh, Home Depot and I got them at a discount because they wasn't looking that good. You know, they weren't looking that good. So whenever I, whenever I pick up any kind of plants, you know, transplants, saplings, or uh, yeah, saplings, seedlings, I, I keep saying saplings. Whenever I pick up any baby plants, basically from any box store, um, if they're not looking good, I try to get a discount and a lot of times it works you know because you know i had this one tiny tim and i had a few more it's one over there and i had some of them that just looked like they wasn't going to survive but so far everything is still alive so far so good these are my collard greens right here so uh and i want to encourage you all i'm writing a book called I'm writing a book. I already have it titled. It's called Bajillion. And what the, the Bajillion stands for, what it, what the title stands for is microorganisms. Bajillion microorganisms. So I'm writing a book, a fictional story. The story is 25 years old, but it didn't start off as that. Um, and like I said, it's fictional. And it's going to be, well, I'm going to try to steer it in that direction of microorganisms and uh i just want to encourage you all to look at the videos i'm going through the, the writing process right now and I'm, I'm i'm doing the whole thing on youtube so if you are into gardening if you are into fictional stories and whatnot you may want to see this process it's it's taken off quite well and i hadn't written anything in uh i hadn't written a book in about five years you know, I published a book last year, but the writing process, I mean, you know, creating from like the beginning, even though the story is 25 years old, I'm officially making it into a book now. So and that process takes a while. It it's, takes a lot of creative energy. But what I've done is uh, I decided to incorporate three things I really like doing. I like the garden. I like to write and I like making YouTube videos. So it's, it's coming together. It's an experimental thing. I'm not getting a lot of views, 
Um, right now, I'm not, and I'm not worried about that. I don't, I don't care as long as the books, as long as the book gets done. I don't really care about the views, but it would be great if I could get some input, some comments, because I'm listening to to whatever you got to say. Anyways, getting back to this. This is my collard green bed, and this is the biggest bed out of all of them. I got three of them so far. I may get one or two more, maybe, maybe three. I don't know yet, but, um, you know, it's, uh, today is September, uh, 17th i believe it is today september 17th i believe so the weather is cooling off here in south carolina um but it's the perfect time to have your collard greens your cabbage all your brassicas in the ground because they are cold weather plants and i, I like to see myself i like to think of myself as a cold weather gardener i like cold weather because it's less bugs you got to worry about you know, I like the spring too, but you know, when it gets summertime, that heat comes out, that sun really, really uh, takes a toll on your garden. I, I, I just don't, <laughs> I don't like when the sun comes out and starts killing everything. You know what I mean? But I'm getting better at, at you know, growing summer crops as well. But um, and also, man, when you grow any growing anything, you got to show love. You got to show actual love to the garden. You know what I mean? Right now, I'm trying to, I'm just watering the entire thing. I'm going to go back to that one and do the same thing. Um, the microorganisms, the bajillions of microorganisms in this, in this soil, they like water. They like water. And I see I have some grass popping up right there. I'll, I'll pull that out. But let me go over here to my, um, this is my Brussels sprouts right here. These are the Brussels sprouts. Never grown Brussels sprouts in my life, and I am quite surprised at how well they're doing. They're doing a lot better than the uh, broccoli I planted uh, one year. And this is, and, and, I, and I, I was wondering about how long, you know, how many years I have been gardening now, and I found a video of my first garden. Um, you know, current garden anyways. I, you know, I, I used to plant things when I was a kid, but as an adult, my first garden was planted in 2020. As a matter of fact, it was on my, my daughter's birthday, uh, April 19th, 2020, or around that time anyways. And um, so I know I have been gardening for going on five years now. This is my fifth year. I got four years under my belt. So around April, I want to say it was like April 18th, maybe. April 18th, that'll be uh, that'll be five years. Anyways, I'm curious about the Brussels sprouts. They are looking get good, but you can see you got some purple. And from what I'm hearing, that purple is a lack of um, I got to do research, but a lack of phosphorus, I believe. Yeah, I think that's a lack of phosphorus, so I may need to um, put some bat guano, a bird guano, on them. I may just do a, uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do a compost tea. That's what I'll do. I'll do a compost tea. Um, maybe I'll do it Thursday morning and let it let it brew for about... 24 hours and Saturday Saturday morning I'll go ahead and put it on there uh, I'll put some worm castings back guano um, seabird guano and some compost maybe I don't want to do too much definitely got to put the uh... oh and fish emotion definitely got to put the fish emotion in there but i think the purple represents a lack of uh a, a low phosphorus phosphorus yeah but i just get the feeling that these uh brussels sprouts are gonna do really really good this is a small one here but it's not nearly as bad as tiny tim over there tiny tim is he, he's not looking good but those are the ones that that surprise you 
the smallest ones, if you just take care of them and give them a little love, they really, really shine. So I will be loving up on this one. And Tiny Tim. Let's go back over here. This is another small one. So I got three small, uh, I think all three of those are uh, Brussels sprouts. Yep. Let me put a little bit more water in my cabbage. And there's a cabbage in that in that uh, raised bed as well. But I'm hoping for, you know, it's South Carolina, so I'm hoping for a little bit more sunlight today. I'm, I'm hoping we get at least another 60 days of good sunlight and, and everything will be nice and fine when it comes winter time. I'm hoping for some cabbage and collard greens, especially around um, Christmas and New Year's time, but maybe even Thanksgiving. All right. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. Like I said, if you guys want to watch the process of writing a fictional story, and I just told you what the story is going to be about or where... Uh, how I want it to go. You know, sometimes fictional stories take off and they go where they want to go. Um, check out my videos. You'll see the thumb thumbnails. Right now I got about 11, 12 thumbnails. And the thumbnail is me sitting on the steps. And that's the steps that I'm sitting on, that is the first house on Meeting Street, the historical Meeting Street downtown Charleston. That is one Meeting Street. That house is, uh, it was built in the 1700s. And at one point, me and the wife, we used to dream about owning that house. It's a mansion. But if you want to see, if you want to Google that house, it's uh, just Google One Meeting Street, um, Charleston, South Carolina. And you can get, see what it looks like. With all that being said, y'all be blessed, man. I got to get back in the house and get ready to go to work. Um, again, I can't say it enough. Check out my videos of me. And leave comments, leave input all that good stuff of me um, during the writing process for the, my next book, Bajillion. Till next time, this is Anthony L. Kelly. Y'all be safe, be blessed. I'm out.